Hey there, in the previous tutorial, we set up a base character blueprint that we could use as a parent for any of the Paragon characters. And now in this one, we're going to take that blueprint and create a child blueprint class for Countess. But this could be applied for any of the Paragon characters. And you can find documentation for this tutorial and more at the description below or on my website. And with that, we could just jump straight to it. So to get started with setting up our child blueprint class, we're going to come to the base character blueprint. We're going to right click on this and hit create child blueprint class. I'm going to be using Countess for this Paragon character, so I'm going to name it Countess underscore BP. We can open up the game mode and assign our default pawn class to Countess. And we can come back to the content browser and move this to the Paragon folder we're using. So in my Paragon Countess folder, I can open up the blueprint and we can assign a different character mesh if we want to. I'm just going to put in the Countess Shogun. Now we want to assign an animation blueprint to this anim class here, but we currently don't have one. So let's go back to the content browser and let's go ahead and create one by right clicking, coming to the animation tab and we'll hit animation blueprint. Now we want to assign it to the skeleton for the Paragon character we're using. Mine will be S underscore Countess skeleton. I'm going to name this Countess underscore anim BP. Now back in our blueprint, we can drop down the anim class and then assign that animation blueprint there. Let's open up the animation blueprint. I'm going to switch over to the event graph and I'm going to start by dragging out the return value of the try get pawn owner and we're going to cast it to the countess blueprint. I'm going to hook this up to the update animation. In the previous tutorial, we created the function so we can calculate our speed. I'm going to drag out the blueprint reference to countess and we can call our calculate speed function. I'm going to promote our speed to a variable and we can just name this speed. We did the same for the aim offset, so we can drag this out and do the calculate aim offset. And we can promote this to a variable and just name it aim pitch. We want to make sure we do the same for the aim yaw. And we will do the same for our lean amount. So we're going to drag out count SBP and calculate our lean. This up here, we have a lean sensitivity. I'm going to put a default value of negative 10 because we want to flip the value. If you're using Rampage, you don't have to flip this value. You can just use 10. With the lean amount, I'm going to promote this to a variable and this can be our lean amount. And that's it in the event graph. Now let's head over to the anim graph. We're going to set up a state machine. We can do this by right clicking and typing and searching for a new state machine. We're going to name this base locomotion. We can double click on this to enter the state machine and we can drag out from entry and add our first state named idle. To assign the idle animation, we can double click on the idle state to enter it. We can right click and type in search for idle, or we can use the asset browser on this right panel and we can scroll down and find the idle animations and we can drag it out and then plug it into the result. We can go back a step by hitting this arrow here or by clicking on the state machine name just here. Let's add in a state for run. We're gonna drag out from idle hit add new state, and we're going to name this run. We want to go from the idle state to run, but we also want to go from run back to idle. So we'll click and drag to it. For the running state, we want to apply our leaning at the same time. So to do this, we're going to set up a blend space. Let's come back to the content browser. We're going to right click, come to animation, and then blend space 1D. And we just want to assign it to the skeleton for our character. And I'm just going to name mine Countess underscore run underscore BS 1D. We can double click on this to enter it. And the horizontal axis here is going to be named lean amount. Minimum axis value is going to be negative 45. Maximum axis value is going to be 45. Now let's scroll through the animation list until we find the jogging animations. We're going to drag and drop jog forward into the center and then jog forward circle left on the left side and then jog forward circle right on the right side. We can preview the blend space by holding left shift and scrubbing the mouse across here. We can apply some more smoothing if we want to by increasing this interpolation time. Now let's switch back over to the animation blueprint. We can come into the run state and we can right click and search for our blend space. Mine is just going to be named Countess Run PS1D. We'll hook that up into the result. We can grab our lean amount variable to plug straight into the lean amount for the blend space. Now back in the state machine, we're ready to set up our transition rules. We'll double click on this transition rule here to go from idle to run. To go from idle to run, we want to make sure our speed is simply above zero. We can plug this straight into the can enter transition. We can copy this here. We can come back a step 
Let's set up the transition rule to go from run to idle. We'll enter this here. We can paste in the nodes and we can drag out from the Boolean and use a not Boolean and plug this into the can enter transition. And this statement says enter the idle animation if our speed is not above zero. Now back in the anim graph, let's go ahead and set up our aim offset. We're going to scroll down on the right panel here until we find a blue asset. And these are named differently for each character. I'm going to choose the idle AO for count S. I'm going to hook up the state machine to the base pose and then the output of the offset to the result. We've already got the aim pitch and aim yaw. Let's plug the yaw in and then let's plug the pitch straight in as well. Okay, now we can hit compile. We can see the character's gone into the idle animation. We can use this anim preview editor to mess around with the values just to preview the animations. If we manipulate the aim pitch, we can see the characters looking up and down. And if we change the yaw, we can see that the character turns around. Okay, now we can hit compile and save. And now we're ready to jump straight into the game. We can press F11 to go into full screen mode. When we turn around, we see the aim offsets working. When we look behind us, we see that the yaw resets to zero. And because of this, when we run and turn around to look behind us, we see that it's fixed the jitter problem we saw in the previous tutorial. Okay, so we now have Countess as a playable character, and you can repeat the steps here for any of the other Paragon characters on the marketplace.